as we rejoin Fenric, he is at the height of his popularity, having exterminated a whole nest of yetis and having earned the gratitude of the town, eager to go and collect trophies from his conquest and maybe make a little gold on the side. He once again acquired the local lads and heads out to the yeti lair. But once they get there, they find all the yeti corpses mysteriously vanished. Annoyed and mystified, Fenric and the boys head back to town, but encounter a snow shard. In the bedlam that follows, Fenric loses consciousness. He wakens in an inn to find his flaming sword missing. He meets up with Rockbreaker, and together they go question the locals, trying to find the thief. They learn the sword is in the possession of a mage, who they track to Anstreth. They find the mage in an inn, and Fenric confronts him, which leads to a short but chaotic fight, during which Fenwick is once again knocked out. Fenric wakes up in a cold, hard prison cell and learns his antics caused the burning down of the inn. He is to stand trial for his actions. Fortunately, he is able to call on Newt to stand witness and get the murder charges dismissed. But he is to help rebuild the inn at the cost of 200 gold and is forbidden to leave town until he does so. Short on money, Fenric starts by helping the innkeeper redesign the inn, making some revolutionary changes along the way. With not much to do while the rubble is cleared from the inn, Fenric visits the witch, hoping she can increase his knowledge of the magical arts. She is happy to oblige, but at a cost. Five years of his life. He agrees to the terms, and after some mildly disturbing coitus, Fenric leaves wiser, but aged five years. He rests up in an inn and puts his new skill to use, studying magical texts which he has collected on his journey and learning new spells. After spending many days studying, he finally heads out to speak to the innkeeper to resume his duties only to learn aging five years had an unexpected boon. He was not recognisable. He decides it would be prudent to continue north and complete his quest in the moor, but the journey is arduous. He almost doesn't make it and has to spend some time recovering from a nasty illness. Hail but broke, Fenric attempts to join a caravan to travel to the moor. During the journey, he fights off some lizard men. He impresses the mercenary captain enough to be allowed to join the caravan for free. Will Fenric solve the mystery of the falling sky? Will his flaming sword draw more trouble? Will his in-burning crimes catch up to him? Find out next time on Dicing with Death. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dicing with Death. Uh, first and foremost, let me say thank you to Layla, and I think her friends, God, I think it's her brother's name is Chris. God, I'm messing up these names. I should have looked it up beforehand. Anyway, thank you guys for doing that intro. That was fantastic. Um, I think we're going to try and make that a weekly thing, and that's way better because I had forgotten what had happened, and I think Ryan had forgotten, and she put it way better than any of us could have. So thank you, Layla, yes, for the indeed. recap. Yeah, thank you. I was just finishing up listening to the stream with a 30 second delay. So I'm back. I'm here. I'm paying attention. Woo! Yeah, huge shout out to Layla. Yeah, well done, Layla. Love those voiceovers. Yeah, and I really, really have to learn. God, it's either you're like your husband or your boyfriend or your brother, which makes it <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I'm not very, sure. Very different. Very different, and I'm not sure which one. Or maybe it's just a friend. I don't know. I'm, I'm a bad person. I should have... I should know this thing and I don't, and I feel terrible. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys. You guys are fantastic. Um, yeah. Please let us know how you want to be acknowledged or shouted out or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they have like a website we should be sending people to? No. And they, they just do this out of the kindness of their hearts because they want to do it. And which makes them I'm, heroes in my I'm, I'm distrustful of anyone that would do this sort of thing on the internet for no compensation or 
Yeah. Anyways. Well, anyway. I'm joking. Says, yeah. <laughs> says the man with no Twitter. Says the man with no Twitter. All right. Um, so. so, yeah. No recap necessary. We all know where we are. Yeah. In the maw of the devouring marsh. Yes. And let's take a quick look at our mappy map. Um, this is the map that Ryan has, but you guys get a better map because I love you more than I love Ryan. That's not true. Ryan. Um, so Ryan was left Keygate, which you can see encircled by my mouse, and has gone up into the maw of the Devouring Marsh. Yeah, um, I think we trekked about a day north, and then our first night camp. Well, we met some lizard men, and our first night camping, we had that Atiyag battle, mm -hmm. and that's where we wrapped up, right? I believe so. So we sleep through the night. Mm hmm. No more, no more Atiugs. No more Atiugs. Um, what time did all of this happen? That happened, I wanted to say... Like which watch? It's like one or two in the morning. So if you want to get your spells back, you're going to have to convince the caravan to hang out for a couple hours while you get a few more yeah. weeks. So I think I presented that to... Well, let me see if I wrote down his name. Um, I don't think I have his name. They... Um, Bohap. Uh, Bohap. Yes, that's what his name is. The leader of the mercenaries. Um, so I did tell him that I'm out of magical energy and that we would have to wait longer if he wants my use of my spells. Otherwise, I can rest on the road or whatever. Hmm. He muses. Uh, that is quite I think we did actually. Oh, did we already solve this? I don't know what the solution was, but I do remember telling him. So you can. I don't know. Um, well, since we don't remember the solution, let's just redo it. Yeah. Um, where is the... I know so I guess... Go ahead. Yeah, so either that night or first thing in the morning, I'll say, uh, Bohap, uh, unfortunately, I have expended all of my magical energies uh, doing battle with the Atiug. Um If you would like use of my, my spells in today's trials, I will need some need for the rest. Hmm. <clears throat> Do uh, are the powers that you have worth the extra time? It is not wise to sit in the swamp during the day. Uh, you have you have seen my powers. I'm right. just just letting you know so that you can strategize accordingly. Give me a charisma check. I'm not even sure if I'm trying to convince him. I'm just setting the expectations. <laughs> uh, Charisma nine. Let's get, the, let's get these dice warm where it doesn't really matter. Eleven. Nope. He's like, uh, this guy's You are useful, are... but there's nothing that beats a trusty spear. <clears throat> we How about continue. a flaming sword? Do you have one? He knows I have a flaming sword. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know no. if he's... He saw it getting like shoved back into its sheath. I think. Well, your your sword is still working. Yes. I nod. Well um, then, are there? There's caravans. Would it be possible for me to slip my way onto one? Like I, I'm not asking for permission. I'm I'm looking um, to see if there's like. Are, does it seem like that's like those people have paid to be on those carriages? It looks like those are their carriages. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, except for the one at the very front, which contains the supplies for Bohep and his men, uh, which mm -hmm. is just some firewood and some food and water and med medicine, extra arrows, extra spears, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm cool. guessing with that sort of charisma check, they're not going to be too stoked on letting me hop on for a free ride. Yeah. So the, right. Bohep says, um, uh, we'll have to make do today without them. Let's continue yeah. on. Let's see. Chain. So I have change self and Harung's baneful deflector left, which will be pr pretty useless. You don't even have a <laughs> in combat. No holes, reckless dreamer. I used that. That no. Remember, I cast it uh, that caused oh, tongues. Yeah. The battle just went to shit at the very end. I probably got a few people killed. Right. Right. But we blamed it on the Atiag. Right. Okay. I forgot about All the right. tongues. That's cool. So you proceed through the swamp. Let's get our. So 
or swap. Yeah, through. I'm now allowed to walk with a caravan, it would seem, so I'll probably walk right up front. Okay. Leaning against my staff. Taking in the sights and smells of the swamp. Uh, there are plenty of sights and smells. As, as you walk down the the treacherous road, which seems to fall apart into the swamp on one side and kind of like be built or like it's slipped at a slight angle and rocks have fallen away and grass has grown up in between. And then it'll like righten itself. And then you'll come across a section that is a very different stone or you'll come across a section that is wood boards. Or, Hold on a sec. The, the, the road is stone. The road the is stone. Part? Yeah. Interesting. Um, I didn't gather that from, or I didn't get catch that last time. Yeah. It's mostly stone, but then it will break into to dirt in some areas or wood in other areas, and the stones will change. Like it's been maintained over many years, and someone will come through and like yeah. repave a section. Can I inspect the stone? Perhaps apply an engineering proficiency, or maybe just an intelligence check. To yeah, give me your engineering proficiency. I'm mostly curious about who built this, how old it is. It seems interesting to me that there's a stone road going through this swamp. Twenty nine. Ooh, there you go. The I'm... craftsmanship looks to. Uh, I mean, you inter- you inspect various segments as you walk along. The craftsmanship seems to change from place to place. Uh, some of it looks fairly recent, like the last 10, 15 years. Some sections of it look fairly. I mean, not too old, but you know, like a hundred years old. You haven't found anything mm-hmm. that it looks to be more than a hundred years old. Um, mm-hmm. And let's. Okay. Bohep so that's probably sees what, you, you know, inspecting the stone from place that's to place. Probably what I'm doing as we're as we're walking. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to sort out, you know, how they're keeping it from sinking into the swamp and yeah. You know, After the the up. first mile, um, where the stone changes a few times, Bohep kinda hangs back for a moment, lets the caravan catch up and says to you, We come through the swamp every now and then and pave it so that it does not so that we can traverse the road. You you laid these stones, you and your man. We provide protection for the workers. It comes at no small expense. The city of Keygate uh, and Pipari finance it. Without us laying these stones, there'd be no way to travel between here uh, between the two cities. Every year we come back and repave the worst section. We maintain the bridges and other such things, but it is dangerous. Swamp is a nasty place. And we have already Indeed. lost more men than I would have liked. I, mean, I think only like one or two died, right? Two died. But still, like, you know, if this is a... Uh, they make this trip every few days and two died on this day, it's, it's pretty bad. Yeah. I take it you do not encounter Atiags regularly? No. The Atiogs are rare. Uh, hmm. It's a bad omen, to be fair. Yeah. Is there snow off of the path, or is that no. all melted the, as well? The swamp, uh, once you got within like 100 yards into the swamp, the snow was gone. Yeah. The, there seems to be an unnatural warmth coming from the water, or maybe it's a perfectly natural warmth, but the swamp generates quite a bit of heat. Um, you find yourself hot and sticky, uh, and just always covered in sweat, yeah, and you're drinking a lot more water than you would expect to. Is there a source of fresh water along the way? No. There's plenty of really? water around you, but you have been warned, uh, and the others have been warned that... So I'm probably rationing my water. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Like, I, I don't think I can drink more water. Yeah, I probably have, like, a half gallon for the two days journey or whatever it is across the Three-day journey. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to... So I've been warned not to drink from the swamp. Mm-hmm. It is dangerous. Do Does anyone in the caravan have water? Do you... Yeah, I mean, you see people drinking water, and you see the front cart has uh, a couple of very large barrels that someone will come in, like, scoop some water out of and drink it. Um, but you don't know if that's communal water or uh, just the guard's water. All right. Um, maybe I'll ask uh, Bohep at some point if I can slip him a few copper for for a share of the water. Yeah. Uh, if you slip him a few copper, he'll give you some water. All right. How much copper is a few? I mean, how much do you offer him? <laughs> I, I think I literally stay. I, 
Uh, Bohep, might I, might I exchange a few copper pieces for a share of your water? Yes. And he puts out his hand. All right. I don't know what water costs. I'll, I'll hand him three copper and he says, see how he takes yeah. it. He nods and Whatever. motions to I'm the back of the caravan. I'm literally down to my last few copper pieces. So it, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have seven left after that. After that, that three there. Um. Okay. So thirst quenched. I'm yeah back to enjoying enjoying the journey. I guess keeping my eye out for wizards and orbs. Although I'm I'm guessing they're probably not. The, this wizard isn't just going to be hanging out off the road. So. Yeah, probably not. We'll see. I think my plan is probably going to be to take one pass of the Devouring Marsh, and if I don't see any interesting leads, I'll probably head back south and investigate more thoroughly. Okay. So I'm just going to follow the caravan. I'm not going to I'm not going to reveal to Bohap my intentions and just let him think that I'm traveling north and I want to be with him for safety. Okay. The road but continues I'll... and after another few hours of walking, the Bohap in front pulls the caravan to a stop and motions you over with a, a finger wave. I'm probably only a few feet away. Mm -hmm. You said the the trail's kind of narrow, right? Basically just wide enough for a caravan. Yeah, and there's walking spots on either side sometimes for people to go. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's like literally road and water or road and like sh uh, stuff. But in this particular situation, there's dry-ish land for about seven feet on either side. All right. So I'm probably on the other side of the mm -hmm. wagon from him or something. He stops it, and I'll, I'll circle around to see what he has to say. He points his spear out in front of you and says, Look, Should beyond those trees. Check? Yes, give me a perception check. Ooh, the dice you are in my spot favor. beyond these trees a very large, scaly creature. Uh, its scales are red in color. Uh, from snout to tail, it's about, well, from snout to rump, it's about 15 foot, feet long with a long red tail about equal length of its body. It has it's four quadruped. legs. Quadruped. It's a quadruped. Yeah. It looks like a large wingless red dragon. Um, I it has Have a, I seen or heard anything about dragons? Nope. So I'm probably going to assume it's a dragon. Yeah, I mean, you... you, you doesn't have that, wings, but I... Doesn't, yeah, it looks like yeah. a large wingless red dragon. Yeah. I'm like, Shh, Jesus, says. or... Son of a stare. Is that... Is that a dragon? It's a fire lizard. They are kin of dragons, but not quite. We must be very breathe, careful around them. Do they breathe flame? They do. My eyes light up probably a little more than, than is appropriate. <laughs> for our... Lucky for us, they are not nearly as intelligent as their cousins. And they are not very vicious either. They're, they're basically large, stupid dragons. The, the main goal is do not piss them off. If you leave them alone, they will leave you alone. Unless they are hungry. In which case, you had best li give them one of your oxen. How far off the road is this fire lizard? It's about 60 feet in front of you and 30 feet off the road to the left, which would be is to the west. Is it moving or... No, it's just kind of basking sun. on a, a, a dry patch of land. Its tail is kind of like lazily switching back and forth and then standing still. Um, and its rump is towards you and its head is pointed in the direction of the road. So you're kind of like coming up from behind it off on the side. <clears throat> is it safe to pass? Perhaps, but I think we had best wait to see if it moves. I you can catch up on that sleep you needed. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that will uh, that will get us any spells back, but it seems like a good spot for a rest. I look mm -hmm. back and it's like the caravan or the. There's you know, people the are people are kind of whispering and talking to one another, and some of the guards are going through and talking to them and they seem a little bit nervous but they they maintain their positions yeah um i think i'm gonna stay here at the front of the caravan maybe squat down take a rest but i'm gonna keep an eye on this lizard observe okay. its behavior and 
note any interesting mannerisms. You note that it has very large claws. Um, I mean, you know, it's a 15 that foot a, long that lizard. A <laughs> um, but yeah, it each hand has what is it? Four claws on it. Is that? It looks in the picture. It looks like it has four, but I don't know. I don't know anything about lizard morphology. Uh, it has four <laughs> claws in each I hand. And a, a, they should have five fingers. Five. Okay. Unless, and but then like a, this big, is a fantasy uh, universe. Evolution flappy, doesn't necessarily have to make sense. Flappy throat thingy coming off near the front. Um, it just kind of hangs there, and as it goes, like kind of jowl, the jowls jiggle with it, and it makes a few mating is... call type things. Just going. I don't know their mating calls. Am I aroused? Uh, maybe. I mean, <laughs> they might. It might just be making noises, but it sounds like a mating call, or or it could just be at the world. You don't know. <laughs> Now we all know what Neil's mating call is. If we do this too much, Laura's going to come busting down the door. (laughs) (laughs) My working theory is the little throat pouch is where it keeps his fire. Mm. So that's where I'm... If if we happen to kill this creature, that's probably where I'll be investigating. Um, As you watch, you overhear... Actually, you you rolled a 27 on perception check a few minutes ago. Um, You overhear the most recent... Not the most recent, but the the closest caravan behind you. The man is talking to his wife and goes, "You know, I heard a merchant back in oh shit, what was that town's name? Back in Keygate, saying that he'd pay up to five thousand gold for one of those eggs for an egg of a, a fire lizard." And his wife was like, "Oh my, you think we can find any?" I was like, I don't know. I doubt it, but a man can dream, can't he? 5,000 gold for a fire egg? This has got me pretty excited, but I'm not go- I'm not about to go charging into the swamp after fire lizard eggs. Uh-uh. Okay. Let's see how the next few hours go. Um, it seems that uh, an hour has passed and the lizard has not moved. And so, uh, mm, go ahead. yeah, I probably wouldn't try to get any more sleep. Like, I, does breaking up rest no work for spell recovery at all? Not at all. Okay. I mean, if it's a little bit like you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and then you go back to sleep, it's fine. But yeah, but I had a strenuous yeah midnight battle with spell casting on all that. So I'd, and then you've yeah. been trekking for hours. Oh, uh, take it. I don't know. Okay, so while while Ryan checks his phone, uh, I guess I could I can't show you a picture of a fired lizard, sadly. Um, I'm just gonna wait a moment. This happens sometimes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I don't think Ryan can hear us. So the eggs are worth 5,000 GP, but the hatchlings, if you can actually like ra- get an egg that's already hatched and kind of raise it a little bit, are worth 7,500 GP, a lot more. They're pretty cool. Each of their claws does 2D, I'm sorry, D8, and its bite does 2D6, and it has a breath weapon that is 15 feet long that does 2D6 damage. Okay, he is back. So let's yeah. stop talking about spoilers and uh, continue with the story. <laughs> oh, what if I had my headphones in still? I checked to make sure you didn't. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you said after about an hour, hour and a half? He gets a little tired of waiting and says, we cannot afford much more time. If we do not make it to the rest of the camp by nightfall, we will be in some trouble. I think we must push on past this creature. But beware. And then he looks back and points to a person who has like two horses pulling his caravan. Uh, mm-hmm. You there. If the lizard gives us trouble, we will give them one of your horses. And the man starts to protest uh, until one of the guards like jabs him with the butt of his spear and says, no, it's that or we die. The guy shuts up. Yeah. 
All right. Um, the caravan think, starts moving. Yeah, I will position myself at the front of the caravan, but like on the far side of the horses, mm -hmm. and ready to like split either forward or backward if the creature looks like it's about to unload a breath weapon on the front caravan. Yeah. You guys continue past, and the fire lizard takes. You know, at some point it turns part way, so its head is like so its eyeball comes out of its socket. You know how like geckos can <laughs> move their eyes independently. Yeah. So it kind of goes yeah. and like looks at you and kind of Me, follows you. Of well, I mean, you guys, the you, okay, yeah. you the collective, yeah. um, you the communists and really watches do. you uh, as the cart moves past it. Um, but otherwise it doesn't no give you no harm. Does it look like it's n I guess I would have been thinking of this during the hour, or probably should have asked this during the break, but uh, does it look like it's nesting or anything like that? Or it's just. It looks like it's like sunbathing. A... Yeah. And then the occasional. It's not like on a group of eggs or anything like that, is it? No. <laughs> um, let's give some perception checks to our crew people here. A few hours later, the uh, Bohep halts the caravan again, pulls his archers forward. Uh, give me a perception check as this is going on to see if you can figure out what he's doing. Nope. And after... I, I just stop. Oh, you speak uh, under common, don't you? Uh, yes. I uh, speak common and lower common. Lower common, yeah. It. Lower common, under common. It's all the same. Um, well, under common in D&D often refers to like the language of drow and duragar. Oh, but that's right. You don't really have that in Solomon. No, I don't. But. So um, lower common, under common works yeah. fine for us. Yeah. Uh, and the, the archers come forward and launch a volley of arrows, and you see in the water uh, some splashing and slithering, and a couple of lizard men pull back and like, run off into the swamp, having been scared off by the, the hail of arrows. Um, but other than that, it's peaceful. There's a few other instances where Bohep uses his archers to, you know, make splashes in the water and scare off creatures that might be trying to attack uh, a few times or not a few, one time he does it and there, nothing moves and he goes forward and then just you know whoops I misunderstood and you know moves the cart and the caravan mm -hmm. forward you stop probably five or six times for such things you know fire lizard here some lizardmen there uh, you know there's a pack of boars on the path up ahead here that sort of thing mm -hmm. um, but it goes pretty yeah. well did it seem like they were making this many stops yesterday, or is there yeah, more Yeah, you made crap? some stops yesterday, but not this many. Okay. This is definitely yeah. more. And more stuff in the middle of the swamp, maybe, or... Something like well, that. Better safe than sorry. Um, uh, and after a long, tiring day of trekking through the, uh, the swamp, you come... Uh, the, the sun starts to set in the west, and you come to this wide, flat, sandy area, which I will bring you over, and it's going to take a little while for the map to load because it is detailed. Uh-oh. You know you're in trouble when your DM has prepared a map. Dun, dun, dun. All I see is black. Oh, wow. How are you liking the dynamic lighting? It's pretty cool. Ooh, it has a... Oh, yeah, that seemed... that's a way better place for me to be hanging out. Yeah, that's where I'll be. Yeah. So this front caravan... Oh, I should probably show chat, huh? Oh, God. Yeah. That's... There we go. Here we go. This front caravan is the one that has all the, the gear for the, the troops. Although I guess that's probably the wrong caravan icon, whatever. And these back ones are uh, civilians. You get to about here, and Bohep, this guy in front with the blue cape, says, uh, we should make camp. It is... This is the place to do it. Alrighty. Um, I assume the people get to... get to making camp? Yeah. Does there this seem like there's anything that I should be doing? to pull off no over here you know, this next cart moves forward a little bit oh god the cart and the horse are not attached 
start pulling forward over here. His guards start moving forward. Uh, when you hear a, oh, and give me a surprise check. I'm just going to have you roll it. Give me a, a d10 plus whatever surprise bonus you have for your Don't high perception. Don't think I have any. Okay. So five, no, I only have 12 okay. perception. Cool. You are not surprised. Well, I mean, you're, you're surprised, but you're not completely taken totally off guard. I'm, I'm shocked. That's the right but one. I'm not, but I'm not surprised in game terms. Right. As a volley of spears from many directions come flying out at you. Uh, not you in particular, but you as a whole. Again, with the, the plural, what did you call it? The royal you? The royal you. The royal <laughs> King you. Fenric. Um, let's make uh, just a fuck ton of rolls. Three... Uh, 3d20. These are hiding from Fenric. And then another 320. So uh, this guard here on the left gets criticaled. Thanks, bro. By a, a, a smallish javelin that flies into him. Holy shit, he takes seven. Um, he actually goes down. He's just like seven oh. damage. Yeah, that's not a, that's not that nasty of a critical, but no, it's not. Well, guard. these are these are not full length javelins. They look like little tiny javelins. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy over here takes three, and this guy over here takes four. And the horsey, who has HP, I actually didn't roll for because I didn't expect to need it. <laughs> Takes one. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. And then more spears just kind of pelt all around you. Um, they seem to be coming from behind this rock over here from behind this rock, and then from above this one. Mm -hmm. So you guys, you feel more or less completely surrounded at this moment. Yeah. Um, Can I roll initiative? I would love you to roll initiative. Oh, yeah, right. don't, don't, add init don't add anything, just flat initiative roll. Why? So I'm group casting Yeah, we're doing spell. group initiative, is what the, right. we're doing here. And, and um, you go first. Yeah, I need to double check my cast, I guess, the no casting time because we're doing group time. But so I'm casting Harung's Baneful Deflector. Let me just make sure that's at least a one round spell. Um, uh, and then give me a yeah, D20 casting time as well. Too. A small prism. Yeah, so let's roll my Wild Surge. Plus our D20. One. Ouch. So it's Ooh. not going to last long, but how many levels lower is that? Is that I one level lower? Two? One. You're level three? Yeah, let me... I should get this table up. Uh, level three, it is two levels lower. You cast Ouch, it as so first level. Level one, so it only lasts for two rounds. Um, okay. What's it do? Um, I conjure a hemispherical field of force. I choose to put it in front of me, and it will randomly redirect missile targets to other creatures within 15 feet of me. Okay. Um, so I will put this in front of me. Yeah, so summon my shimmering force, and I'm going to position my back to the cart here. So the force field is like... So where do I like make a... I know I can do like auras, right? Yeah. Um, um, nah, that's probably not the way to do it. I'll just draw a little doodle. So I'm protected from that direction. So I'm sort of holding my staff out in front of me, and I guess there's like a force field emanating from the staff. Um, do I see any of these creatures? Not yet. Uh, well, actually, give me a perception check, maybe. Sure. Not doing much else in this round. Uh, no. 20, probably not quite. Not quite. Uh, but you see them momentarily thereafter as they spring from behind this 
uh, thing. They are these pinkish dog-like men, maybe two and a half, three feet tall, each wielding these short little javelins. And they hop out from behind the rocks, and they have another one on their back, and hurl them in a volley at you. So exa how exactly does Hornful being from blah, blah, Yeah, blah, blah. I probably wanted to be closer to them. Um, whenever an individual missile attack is directed at protected creature, me, the Baneful Deflector activates. Instead of striking the target, the... Oh, crap, we need to look it up because it's cut off. Um, let me dig that up. So I think it randomly rolls creatures within 15 feet of me. Okay, well, there is a horse and a driver for the carriage behind you. And, yeah. and are those guys within 15 feet? No. Baneful detector. Baneful deflector. Baneful deflector. Uh, um. Within a whenever. Feet. Okay. Instead of a strike, so I guess it doesn't even. There's no chance for Instead it to strike me. Target the creature. The missile target is determined randomly among the creatures within a 15 foot hemisphere of the protected creature, including the protected creature. The missile then changes course towards the new target with normal chance to hit. If the new target is beyond the range of the missile, no target is hit. So it's not. Am I? I I'm not among the random creatures, right? It you can't are. Hit you me. are. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the missile target is determined randomly among all the creatures within a 15-foot hemisphere of the protected creature, including the protected creature. Okay. Uh, if the protected creature is struck, okay, yeah. the spell immediately fails. Several people are protected by a baneful deflector. Missile, blah, 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 blah. Cool. So, uh, they are not 15 feet from you? No. Unless I can move a few feet forward at seeing them pop out. No. 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 Okay, so... Uh, one, two, three. You are one. Horses two. Is anyone else within fifteen? No. No. Uh, nope. So you are one. Horses two. Driver is three. So we're gonna roll three d four. I should guess that should have been three d three. Okay. So you horse driver. So it goes driver, then you, and then the baneful deflector fails because you get. Well, you might not actually be hit by no, it. No, if I don't get hit. Yeah, yeah, so roll the attack rolls. The attack roll against the driver is a hit. The driver takes a single point of damage on his not-so-fantastic HP. So were those all directed at me? Yeah, they were all directed at you. The okay. second one... So that one, I mean, that one pr probably was going right for me, and I... Bing, and just with my sphere of force, and it just nails the guy right next mm -hmm. to me. The, the one Sorry, that would, would target you... Uh, actually rolls a two and hits in the sand in front of you, uh, making the third one bounce off and fly directly at the horse, which it misses. Mm -hmm. um, so my deflector is still up, only for one more round, though, because mm -hmm. I rolled crappy on my wild surge. And uh, another six shots ring out from above. Ooh, one critical. And another critical... Wow. Um, so that guard is probably going down unless this is magic roll. Oh my god. Okay. This guard is almost dead, but not quite. Saving throw versus death is a natural 20. He is solid. Got a lot of 20s today. Uh, three damage against the horsey here, which brings him to 13. And another crit on... Actually, that is not a natural 18, so that's just a hit. Three on this guy. Ooh, which drops him. It's oh, not looking good. It is not looking good. Um, and these guys rush to actually engage and encircle uh, Bohep, who is in front. You hear Bohep calling out during this chaos, Kobolds! Stab them! <laughs> what else do you do with a kobold? That's that's really the question. What would you do to a kobold? Um, he gets hit once. Oh, okay, yeah. That's his armor class. Um, he gets hit once for a whole two points of damage. And then it is their turn. 
Bohep, whose stats are... Mm, it's, didn't they go with me? I thought we did group initiative. No, no, no. They have their own initiative round. Oh, okay. Um, where did I put my booklet of information? Here we go. Um, I'm just trying to remember his level here. Okay, yeah, so Bohep gets one attack this round. Natural one, complete and utter miss. Archer gets two attacks. Natural 20, natural 19. Oh my god. This is a high, high rolling round of combat. Yeah, who'd have thought some zeroth level fighters and kobolds would be able to inflict this much damage on each other? Seriously, that kobold drops, this kobold drops as each of them take critical shots. The remaining one yelps in terror. Um, this guy runs and climbs up here, but you lose sight of him pretty quickly. This guy hops on top of the caravan, and can he actually reach? Which guys are you talking about? Uh, they are behind you at the back. They may okay. be in dim light for you. Yeah. Um, he can't actually hit him, so the guy is going to leap at the kobolds. Natural Badass. 20 on his leap attack. Holy fucking shit, dude. I've rolled like six <laughs> 20s. Um, that, that's a critical. It's a double critical on these fucking kobolds, uh, which is a, a definitely a kill. Archer is down. This archer here fires a volley of two arrows. One of them strikes a kobold and drops it. And we roll initiative next round. Six. Two, four. Uh, okay. Bohep goes. He takes his spear drives it through the remaining kobold Eef. for i need to roll its hp for enough to kill it it drops to the ground this archer comes over here ah. fires a shot while the other archer below fires a shot a miss and a hit the hit drops one of these suckers. Oh, God, they have so little life. Isn't it great? Isn't it? Um, While well, the two spearmen that have climbed the rocks don't do anything. I forgot to make his attack last round, which is still a miss. Um, and the kobolds go. This one remaining one here just turns and fucking flees. He just... Rah, darkness! Uh, takes off blank number on the rock which you can't see but you hear the the sounds of kobolds shouting and people dying um up on the rocks behind you mm -hmm. we're gonna do this those two bastards god this is i love second edition it is way more lethal than fifth it is just like oh yeah. you rolled a 20 you're dead <laughs> I know, people complain about 5e being lethal, but <laughs> not like not like second edition. Not like second edition. And then those three make their attacks hit and hit. With their spears, overwhelming numbers are paying off. And this guy drops by five and is down. Uh, leaving us with you. Fenric. Um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not about to go charging into the darkness after kobolds. Is it like sun is just set, or it's like twilight? It is twilight. Yeah, I think I'll circle over to here uh, and check the vital signs on this guy. Um. So I'll kneel, take a glance at him, and then like keep my force field positioned towards the towards the woods he seems stable uh, and unconscious he's not bleeding to death so he lucked out and hit zero hit zero exactly um i guess i'll make my way towards the back of the caravan and see what's going on 
Sure. So at the end of the round, I'll probably wind up somewhere like here. I mean, oh, you whoa, have light you can move 120. Yeah, the light is sourced off of you. You have 120 feet of movement. I'm sorry, yeah. 120 yards worth of movement. You can go wherever the hell you want to go. 120 yards. So I can even like to climb these rocks is like an athletics check. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be athletics. It would be because um, we Strength don't have or athletics for climb. Yeah. I, you can see a fairly easy spot to get up on these rocks. I'd give you a dex check just to, so you don't slip and fall. But as you yeah, get as closer, I get closer, you... how many kobolds are on top? Well, what? Are, how many of you can see? All right, and there's a spearman doing battle with the kobolds. Uh -huh, and then another spearman up. who's been downed. Yeah. Where is the easy spot to climb? This area where these, right next to the spearman, where those uh, pebbles are. Sure. Why don't I approach from here? This better not get me killed. R D twenty plus. What Are is you my dex? attacking with your? Oh yeah. I'm trying to climb. Oh, my dex is not good. Sixteen. So 16. am I just like fumbling to get up the, the rocks? The rocks are slick with from the humidity, and they have moss growing all over them. So you start to climb up them and just kind of like slip and skid down. You maintain your footing, but you just have you can't get up them. Okay. Okay. Initiative. Um, so if a spell lasts two rounds, it lasts the round it was cast, and the next round... Oh, it's probably... The shield should be up until my next initiative, actually, right? Correct. So I, so if the kobolds go before me, I will still have a shield. Right. R, D, 10, 5. Okay, you tie with the, the humans. Okay. So take your action... I guess I'll try and scramble up that. Uh... No. Nope. Um, you can still do other things if you'd like. You just can't make it up there. Maybe I'll pick up a rock and chuck it at a kobold. Do it. Roll to hit. Nope. Nope. <laughs> rock goes wide. A spearman stabs at one kobold, misses it, and yells back at you, Wizard! Cast your spells! <laughs> while Bohep uh, comes charging back like this. One of these archers turns, climbs on a caravan. One of the other archers comes over here. They pick their targets. Ooh, miss and a miss. And Bohep hurls a spear with a natural one. Um... Saving throw versus death. Oh, God. Um, give me a, a D2, Fenric. Did he critically miss or something? G give me a D2, Fenric. Two? Okay. I hope one was me. The, yeah, Does one was Does it hit you. the spearman? It hit hits the, the spearman. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll make a roll against the spearman. I kid you fucking not. Natural 20 again. Holy, I love this die. It's like the sixth natural 20. He so crits his own spearman in the back. Whoops. Seven, eight, nine. Hope that doesn't get blamed on my baffle deflector. Twenty four, five, six with back attack. Nope, that's nine, ten, eleven points of damage. He literally, he, gets... he yeah, he was at one HP. He. The spear, he hurls his spear, and it goes, like, right through his own guy's neck on the side. And his own person drops to the ground, tumbles towards you, and the spear, like, poof, lands on your shoulder. Like, you know, not difficultly, but you know, as the guy falls, it goes, and crashes into you. Um, not a um, great day. Ooh, is there on that way? And kobolds go... I didn't use any of my movement. Is it too late to retreat? <laughs> no, uh, it's Since still those the are same round. Obviously, right? Yeah, same round. Keep going. There's three kobolds on the rocks, right? So I'm gonna pull back to like here. Oh, at least four kobolds on the rock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, kobolds have lost half their numbers. Morale check. They are holding steady. The kobolds feel victory close at hand. They've taken down plenty of these these pesky human guards. 
and they turn to face you, and two of them chuck spears at you. The horse is bigger. The horse is bigger. <laughs> you are a threat to them. The horse was an easy target when no one was attacking them, but now that there's now that their people are dying, they've reprioritized their targets. Um, what I is should your... get some sort of cover. Can I get an AC bonus for being partially behind a horse, depending on which ones they're throwing? Yeah, let's see. I'll give you 25% cover. What is your armor class? Mm. 10? I'm, I'm a wizard. <laughs> oh, just a flat 10. Yeah, one of yeah. them hits you for a Hope whole... Hope it's a D4 spear. For a whole four points of damage. Shit. The other um, spear oh, lands wait. at your feet as three spears get tossed towards Bohet. Bam! Look at my HP bar. Um, a 16 and a 19 will hit Bohet. Mm, man, man, this is a far more lethal round than I could have ever imagined. Um, and then it is initiative. Okay, come on, get initiative. Our d10, four. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Bohep's archers get two shots at the very end of the round. Natural 20 again! Oh my god, this is like the greatest <laughs> die in the world. It's like Your Justin's pink die. Pink die. Yeah. Um, that will probably drop drop a kobold and injure a kobold. Okay. They go first. Archers get shots again. Miss kobolds miss. go first? Or no, no. Soldiers, uh, go first. soldiers go first. Bohem mm -hmm. climbs the rocks with a successful check and makes a stab which will hit for six, which will drop a kobold. And this guy bleeds again. Uh, your turn, Mr. Four Initiative. I only see two kobolds left. Um... All right, fuck it. I'm going to steal the glory. So I'm casting my change self. Let's mm -hmm. make sure that goes off. 13. Is that a wild? No, that's a level one wild surge, isn't it? No, me... I think that's... I think 13 is the magic number. Is 13 the magic number? Oh, it's okay. 12. 13 was the magic number for level two. Good thing I leveled up. So that's no change. Okay. Yes, it All goes right, so off. So I'm casting change self. I'm growing one foot taller, and I'm going to disfigure my face and do a horrific, monstrous visage. My hair will turn to snakes that breathe little puffs of smoke and flame, and my eyes will be red. And I will bellow loudly as I leap towards the kobolds, drawing my flaming sphere, or flaming sword. 20, my air, plus seven and making it up the rocks. So I'm like, how tall am I now? Hold on, let me change some of this dynamic lighting stuff because now that you're on the rocks, you can actually... Um... Yeah, so I'm I'm like just shy of seven feet tall. I've got a monstrous face. I'm wielding a flaming sword and roaring as loudly as I can in these kobolds' faces. <laughs> and that's the end of my turn. Okay, that's a fucking morale check if I've ever seen one. Yeah, and they and they get a penalty for being against magic users. Ooh, you remember your kobold lore well, don't you? Oh, I, that's just a generic uh, morale check. Do kobolds specifically say that they fear magic? No, I, I was just assuming it was a kobold thing, but yeah, you're right. No, it's a there's like a penalty to your morale if you're against right. spellcasters. So. These three fuckers bolt as far and Do as I get fast an attack as they opportunity? can. You do against one of them. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Right? Is the other one within five feet of you? I only get one attack of opportunity. I'm okay. a level three wizard. <laughs> yeah. I get a minus one to hit. <laughs> and nope. A minus one to hit? Why, why'd you roll that minus Sorry, five? Sorry, negative one. Okay. I roll because I'm non-proficient with the short oh, sword. Yes, yes. But plus two for back attack, and there's a magical bonus. Makes, and, makes yeah, it a one <laughs> or a two. <laughs> All right. Um, the the kobolds flee, and Bohep is seems content to let them go. The archer on the caravan takes his second shot, ooh, which pegs one, 
and drops it, and the other ones flee into the night. Um, um, I assume I can dispel my change self at will? Yeah. I just kind of flatly say you can dispel whatever you want at will. Okay. Um, so I will look around for a minute or so, make sure that everyone in the in the caravan gets a good look at how badass I am, and then I will dispel it and change back to my normal self. Okay. <sighs> Let out a sigh, panting of effort. The the soldiers re uh, gather the bodies and pull the caravan into places. Um. Yeah, I'll go take a look at the fallen, the other two fallen soldiers. Okay. And see how they're doing. Um, I guess it's been a few rounds, but I'll roll int checks to see if I can stabilize them at least. Yeah, give me an int check for this guy. The other one is stable already. Oh, nine plus sixteen, so That's twenty-five. Fast. Yeah, I right, stabilize. You stabilize him. him. He is stable, but badly injured. Yeah. Um, he looks like without immediate medical attention, he will probably not make it. Yeah. So I guess we will make camp. Yeah. yeah. Try and make the wounded as comfortable as possible. The the rest of the caravan eventually catches up. They seem to have the the kobold attack seems to have just hit the front. Um and they pull the wagons in a, a tight circle for the night. Sadly, these mm -hmm. horses are connected to these wagons, so I can't put them elsewhere. <laughs> but, you know, they do this. Uh, Bohep looks over his wounded soldiers and says, points to the one who's very badly wounded and says, uh, gives a sigh. Is that the one that I just stabilized? Or yeah. the one that... The one that you stabilized gives a sigh. And uh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Does he look like he's about to euthanize the guy? <laughs> Maybe. I like Bo Bohab. We're like a day from town. The guy will live. <laughs> he, his wounds are bad. He will slow us down. Can't we put him on a wagon? Huh? Mm. I don't. Uh... You may be a hardened man. But these others, seeing someone bleeding to death, slowly dying from grievous wounds, uh, it puts fear in the soul. Uh, don't you think it'll put more fear to watch their commander euthanize him in front of them? He I'm whispering. Your... This is like a private conversation. I, I'm like not trying. I don't want to undermine his authority in front of everybody if I can help it. He puts a hand on your shoulder and says, Fenric, this man is yours then. You will care for him. Uh, sure. Sure. Um, All right. <laughs> he sets up the other two with some water, you know, wets their, down their face and everything, and then gathers the three of you. The, the remaining uh, people, the, the civilians, Hang out. I don't have mm -hmm. tokens for them, but they hang out down in this area. How um, many civilians are there? Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, ten, twelve. Hmm. There's twelve. Uh, they hang out down there while Bohep gathers the three of you and says, uh, It is unfortunate. We have taken serious losses. We may not make it through this swamp. Uh... I have never lost so many men so quickly before. Are, are kobolds usually this aggressive? No. They have been in the past, but not for quite some time. And usually not in... Usually they, they pull back after the first volley fails to win their day. Something is unusual. Something is amiss. I gathered as much. I will think on this, but it is of no matter to our current predicament. Um, hmm. Mr. Wizard, I think it is time that you take that rest. Your magic would have been most useful today. 
Excuse me? My, <laughs> my magic was most useful. I'm sorry that I could not do more. Why do you not use that flaming sword? Perhaps it would be better in my hands than in yours. <laughs> Perhaps, but unfortunately... It is, it is a finely tuned magical artifact that cannot simply be wielded by, by anyone. Give... let me use it. I believe I can. And you uh, notice kind of like a twinkle in his eye. I'm and he, sure, yeah. his hand just kind of like... He's not reaching for it, but his hand is kind of like, uh, you know, getting ready to, to reach out for it. I, I have noted your skill with the spear. I think we are we are much better off with the fire in my hands and that and the spear in yours. <laughs> Dude, like I can roll a charisma check or something. No. Yeah. It's my sword, damn it. <laughs> but I'm not gonna put it. You like might that. get us killed with your decision, Fenric. Noted. Fine. Hmm. We'll make camp, set fires all around, go through all the wood if we have to. We do not serve. Uh, we must make it through tonight if we even hope to make it through tomorrow night. Um, how many civilians are there? Twelve. This is. I thought this was the last night that we would be in the swamp. Is there another? It's it another... seems that there will be uh, possibly another night, by the way that he phrased that. I'll yeah, I'll clean up my own wound. I'm pretty fucked as well. Um, I want to inspect one of the kobolds at sure. some point. There are plenty like, of bodies so around you. Yeah, so I'll wander a little ways away and search the body of the kobold. Um, yeah, I'm. 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 My theory is that there is a some some powerful force, perhaps even the wizard that I hunt has organized these kobolds and instructed them to raid. Maybe even just like a bigger, badder goblinoid or something. But I want to look for signs that they may be organized. Maybe like the weapons are such that they, well, they would often steal weapons. I don't know. I, let me, can I roll a perception or an int check or something to investigate? Yeah. Give me a perception check and an intelligence check. 23 perception, 32 int. So I you investigate see the... whip marks on their backs. It looks like these kobolds have been recently lashed. On more than one? Yes. More than one kobold? Yes, yeah, so you inspect um, so five will... of them and you see the whip marks on three. So I'll pull one of the, maybe one of the kobolds that was up here mm -hmm. I was looking at. So I'll like pull them behind the wagon so that it's like, I don't want to pull it into the camp, but I'll pull it near the camp and go fetch Bohap. Okay. He comes and over with you. This, and, I, and point this out to him. I was in, inspecting the, the kobolds and look what I found. And I like pull this shirt aside and show the whip marks. Hmm. Like, it seems some taskmaster is taking charge of these kobolds, whipped them into shape. Interesting. I wonder who would do such a thing. Who would work with such creatures? Do you have an idea? Many, but none that will help us get out of or but none that will help us get out of the swamp. I think it is time that we rest. We shall take stock of our situation in the morning, but know that these goblinoids will be more aggressive and organized than usual. Hmm. What is, what is? Oh, that's fire. All right, and then I will return back to the camp. I will tend to my wounded man as best I can. I mean, I already made my int check to stabilize him. There's really nothing I can do. I'm not trained right. in medicine or anything. Um, I will keep him with the other two wounded, but I'm guessing that they look like they're going to wake up in the morning. Yeah. All right. And and yeah. we should take our first break now Sam. actually no no because no, we we only have an hour we have three hours yeah no, so sorry, we'll probably two do, hours so yeah so we let's can, actually keep yeah, going a little keep further. Going? yeah 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 we can do two extra long sessions or something yeah all right so
So, all right, we go to sleep. I will sleep with all of my stuff, with my short sword under me, still at my waist. It may be uncomfortable, but don't want Bohep getting any ideas. Right. Use my bag as a pillow. Okay. Um, you will need to take a watch. There are only four of you left that are capable right. I'll fighters. I'll do either first or last. Take sure. a pick. Um... Why don't I take first watch? Okay. So I'll, yeah, I'll. Okay. The night passes uneventfully, actually. Woo! Spells! Um, and the morning. Actually, I should have taken last watch, huh, to memorize spells. I knew there was well, then you would have been memorizing spells while you were watching, which would make it difficult, and you wouldn't have been watching then, you know? Mm -hmm. One way or the other, it doesn't really matter. All right, so spells... Oh, sleep is a level one spell, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, let's do a sleep. Um... I hope you appreciate this map because it took me like six hours to make it. Or like four hours or something ridiculous. Does memorizing spells with higher level spell slots do anything in this edition? No. It doesn't, does it? But I might be persuaded that if you memorize a first level spell as a second level spell, instead of casting it as level three, you would cast it as level four. I don't know if I'm going to argue that. <laughs> I mean, sounds cushy, but... Let's see. I yeah. do need to get... There's not very... There's no good second level wild magic spells. Need to write some. I guess I can go with that deflector again. So I'm going to memorize Sleep, Magic Missile, and the Hall's Reckless Dweamer, Web, and I guess I'll do Horring's Baneful Deflector. I've only got one more of those prisms. Oh, do they actually, they, uh, they're expended? It does take a spell component. Yep. A small prism that shatters when the spell is cast. Okay. Oh, that's why I didn't go there. Okay, there we go. Hold on. So this map here, you were saying, take took you a long time to get together? Yeah. Did you do it tile by tile? This isn't actually... This isn't a... Uh, no, this is something that like, I slowly built together using various different assets. Awesome. Yeah. And you can scroll up, and there's so much more that you can't even see. Really? I, it looks like it's the edge of the map. Oh. We'll see. Well, I don't know we'll how that. far your vision extends. Yeah, but look, there's there's all that shit at the top that is covered in darkness. There's like yeah, a whole... We'll find out. You know... 16 right. by by 150 foot area. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right. Um, so the following morning, how are... So did the two wounded guards wake up? Uh, the two wounded guards do wake up. They are in bad shape. They're probably still at zero, though, aren't they? They probably can't travel. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, they. Do you have a, a medicine proficiency? No, I'm just smart. <laughs> oh, I do have herbalism, but I don't have healing. I have herbalism and alchemy. But mm -hmm. no, so I can just I can throw in checks at them, but I can't actually heal in any useful way yeah well in that case uh they are awake but useless for the day mm -hmm. uh two and then mine is probably in the negatives yeah i'm gonna see if to i can roll a why don't you roll it for him give me a d10 if you roll a f f f higher than a five he is healed 
by one if you roll lower than five. Okay. No, it's the other way around, isn't it? Well, he's at negative five. So oh. if you roll higher than the absolute value of his HP, he heals. If you roll lower, he doesn't heal. Yeah, so as you get closer to negative 10, it gets harder and harder right. to survive. Right? right, right, right. So he heals by one. Okay. So he's at negative four. I'm going to see if... I'm going to ask amongst the common folk and see if there's room on any of the wagons for him or if there's room on the I mean it, it does look like there's room on the lead wagon uh, not really there's like a bunch of you'd have to like stack shit and then it would be likely to fall off and it, it doesn't really look like there's room to put an injured man on any of the wagons or on the lead wagon on the lead wagon you can ask around with the others I'll ask around with the others if they have room for the wounded the, the two awake ones can sit. They're, they don't have a problem. It's the, the guy that needs to lie down. Yeah. Um, three of the people say that there there's no room. Uh, one of them says that he's there's room, but his blood would ruin the, the crops and the shit that he's hauling from one place to another, and he doesn't want to do it. Um, <laughs> and the fourth guy... I didn't roll a fourth die, that's why. Or the fifth one... Uh, the fifth one has his family in the back, and he is worried about the, the children seeing a a dying man, or riding with a dying man for the course of the day. Um, I don't really have any valuables to offer. Can I think of any way to, like... I mean, I have... I still have three quarters of a square yard of cloth. Oh, no, I've got, like... I've got over a square yard of cloth. Um, so I think the guy that was like, yeah, but it'll get blood on my crops, so I'll be like, oh, don't even worry about it, and I'll just start, like, pulling cloth out of my bags and getting the back of his cart set up so that the blood won't get anywhere. And he was probably trying to shrug me uh, off and be like... You you well, can't. You'll get blood on it. No, I'd rather not. And I'll be like, "Oh, yeah, you totally won't get blood. See, problem solved." And I'm, yeah. He gives some. I'm just going to start setting it up. So. protests, but you know, once you produce enough cloth to keep the 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 grain from getting soaked, he eventually just kind of shrugs and lets it happen and helps you load up the body onto the wagon. Yeah. So I assume he only took one wound, right? So I can, yeah. Yeah, so it was one really Use up bad a half wound. of square yard, half square yard of cloth to cover up the cart where the blood would be soaking through, and maybe a few other handkerchiefs, a few of my handkerchiefs to bandage the guy. Um, I'm not going to slip any copper to this guard yet, but I will or to this peasant yet. Do you want me to roll any sort of int check to see if I can actually prevent the blood from spilling, or is it not a non? No. I, you, I mean, if you just have extra cloth to put down, that'll be fine. Okay. I mean, it's, it's blood, you know, it doesn't it soak that badly. And I'll, like, rearrange the stuff in the back of his cart so that it's further away from him. Oh, his cart's pretty much just like a pile of grain. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you so, continue onward then, right? I, yeah. Unless Bohap was like, it's safer to sit here, I would assume that we'd want to keep moving. Yeah, you guys keep moving. All right, let's give encounter checks for the next day. Okay. The next day through the swamp, you see all manner of things. Um, at one point, you were crossing a bridge, a shoddy bridge at that. It is looks it like bridge it's... right up here, or is this another bridge? No, this is this is a few hours later. Okay. You are but crossing that whole that whole top sixteen feet of your map went unused. I know. Maybe we'll use it when you come back through the swamp. Or you can use it in another campaign or something. Or something, yeah. Uh, as you are crossing uh, this other rickety bridge, it's basically like long ropes holding uh, boards across, like a suspension bridge. It's so rickety that you must have one wagon cross at a time. So you like put some people on one end, put some people up the other end, and, like put the wagons across one at a time, just praying that the, the, the bridge will hold. I am an engineer. I do not pray. I calculate. And I calculate that the probability of this bridge collapsing is quite high. <laughs> uh, but you spot off in the distance about you know, 600 yards out a mammoth of a slug. It must be 50 feet long if it's, you know, a yard. It's huge. And it's just like creeping across. 
uh, must be six or eight inches deep in water, moving away from you, but just kind of like cruising through the swamp. It's a sight to behold. You, you've you heard of such things, and your brother says he... Did you have a brother? Your cousin. I, we didn't establish. Your cousin said he once saw one, but you know... Got it's a lot of cousins. Of, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where you're like, well, I mean, everyone's cousin says they've seen this giant slug, but... So but now I'll be actually, the cousin that's yeah. that's talking about a giant slug. Yeah. Um, at one point in particular, Bohep has his remaining archer fire archers fire a volley towards a tree, and you see a, a lizard man get skewered to it, and then out of the tree come hundreds and hundreds of bats, and they swarm and crackle and caw, and they go around. I guess bats don't caw, but they and they yeah, do they some. Chew. I don't Prize. think they go R. Bats don't make Arr! Maybe if they're like huge, like the flying foxes make some pretty horrific noises, but... What's a flying fox? The big fruit bats. Ooh, yeah, that's totally what these are. They're the big scary fruit bats. That'll get in your hair. <laughs> get in your hair, they're like as big as your head. Yeah. Um, they fly around for a little while and everyone panics for a bit, but they, you know, they're, they're mostly harmless. Um, and you continue. The The day is fully eventful, but there are no combat encounters, if that's what counts. That is what counts. I only have one HP. Yes. Um, and you pull into a rest stop later that night. Uh, pick a watch. Um, I'll do last watch this time. It actually doesn't matter. Yeah, but I'll do, I'll do first watch again, actually. I think that more fits Fenric's personality. Sleep in a little late. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, you are up late at night doing your the typical watch. You've rested in another large sandy area uh, mm -hmm. with remnants of previous campfires lying about. And you notice a light coming from the west side of the swamp. Uh, How far out? Pretty far out. Uh, it, it seems to be... It flicker? Uh, flicker, not quite. There, it does so waver a little bit. I guess you might call it flicker, but there's not ver uh, there's not a lot of variance it, in it. So it doesn't look like fire necessarily. If it's fire, it's a steady flame. It seems mm -hmm. to be pretty far. Maybe maybe, like, so maybe, maybe a, a lantern. Mile out. Or... Yeah. Okay. Maybe a mile out I, or something. Yeah. But the interesting part is that it is not at ground level. It is a little bit above the tree line, or at the tree line. So it's so it's like up probably. and out. Yeah. How can like I a lighthouse gauge almost. how quickly it's moving, maybe? Or is it standing still? It is standing still. Interesting. Ooh, I do have more papyrus. Um, I think I will, by the firelight, I will probably try and sketch out a map of the area and try and sort out where this light is. I'm a little too beat up to be investigating it now, but I... Yeah. This is interesting. I may want to come back here. Yeah, uh, it looks to be at least a mile out into the swamp and uh, up 20 or 30 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, I'm going to watch it for most of my watch, I would think. Does it just stay there? It stays lit the whole night? Uh, you are watching for two, three hours, I think. Three, six, nine. Yeah, you're watching for three hours-ish. Uh, so yes, for the, the duration of your watch, it stays lit. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, you wake Who, up the he's one watching of the after me. One of the archers. Of the archers. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> as I wake him up, I, I'll point it out. I'll say there is there is a light on the horizon, out, a, a mile out the swamp. There. Have you seen anything of of the sort? He nods. Is, is, yes. Yes. The, that light has been there before. Same spot. Hmm. This is relatively when, new. We no one dares to investigate, but lights in the swamp are not uncommon. I have seen a willow the wisp before, but those usually move. What yes. that is, some say it is the the king of all willow wisps, hiding out there, trying to drag entire caravans into the swamp. Mm hmm. Well, I am certainly enchanted. I think I will take a nap. Good. Have a good watch. I do not recommend going out there. It is most dangerous. <clears throat> uh, 
why I gotta go. So I will dream of Willow Wisps. Okay. And hopefully not be awakened in the night. Okay. And we will take our break here and pray that nothing happens in the night. See you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.